Well, hey, Caitlin. Hi. I heard a rumor that Zach gets to be on microphone again today. Zach is back. Yeah, so this episode, apparently we're not doing things Zach hates because Zach doesn't hate anything. I is think that... that's probably it. It's Zach's dislikes, which I think is really sweet. Or maybe it's like a like a social media like a thumbs, oh, like a down, thumbs down situation. Down. Is that is it a like a call oh, out? Is it we're a, gonna is ask. it a youth thing? Maybe. <laughs> the youths are calling them dislikes <laughs> because of the thumbs down. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to asking momentarily. Yeah, and we will. He's sitting over here with his mic muted. <laughs> this is like He's the cat that ate this. the canary over there. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, we got into, uh, in a previous episode, one thing that Zach dislikes that I also dislike, which is olives. Yeah. Um, and tapenade and those types of things. And I believe our cocktail is inspired by the dislike of the olives. Yeah. And... I think if you made this cocktail with vodka, your husband would also dislike it's, it. Yeah, this isn't allowed at my house. No. We don't. Yeah, we're, so, we're not doing a dirty martini. Yep. Yeah. Our yeah. cocktail of the week is the dirty martini. And here she is. Six ounces of vodka, three yes. ounces of olive brine, a splash oh. of sweet vermouth. Uh, shake all of that together. Pour in. Oh, this is a double. Yeah, because like, two chilled martini glasses. Well, because yeah, it's nine ounces. So <laughs> I was like, like as you were doing on. that, I'm like, I'm like six ounces of vodka. Sign me up. Just leave the it, keep, keep the it rest. Cold, put it in a glass. I'm good to go. Yeah. Uh, shake shake all of your liquid. Pour into two chilled martini glasses or one very large other glass. Uh, stuff an olive with a small piece of blue cheese and mm. uh, let's see, we've got four olives, so two and two. And then um, thread those onto a toothpick and pop them into the glasses. Um, yeah, so I love blue cheese. So the blue cheese and vodka. So you could just give me vodka and then a little plate of blue cheese yeah. cubes. I'm, I'm happy. Uh-huh. I'm good. Uh, the rest of that nonsense, I agree with Zach and yeah. no. I don't. It's like I vodka, I could just like whatever. It's a waste of time and space. Um I don't have a strong opinion on sweet vermouth. I'm okay with it. We've got some and there's certain drinks that need it. Yeah. I like I like olives on mm-hmm. pizza. I like Kalamata olives like in a Greek salad. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I like, you know, I like them in beer. But it's like, it. The, I think a dirty martini for me is like less than the sum of its parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, it, the, like pieces of it are fine <laughs> but i don't put them well, no, together, don't put them together. No, no, thank you i'm not interested yeah um yeah no like i don't think so so question for you because okay. i feel like you'll know this uh, martinis are typically gin though right not vodka, vodka i think vodka it's like are kind i of think newer. it's like half and half like some are some, gin, do some gin. are yeah but i feel like the original like james bond shaken shall not stirred shall we look is a gin martini and so that like my question i guess is if you've got a, a gin that's got that you know nice aromatic to it that mm-hmm. tininess that mm-hmm. i hate in gins but mm-hmm. then a lot of them have does that play better herbally with the olives and the olive juice i don't know because i feel like a vodka martini a dirty vodka martini or dirty gin martini are going to taste very different but i think the dirty is the all like because like a martini is different than a dirty martini. Oh, you think a dirty martini has to be vodka? No, it has to have olive juice. Like right. it's yeah. And but I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't olive know. juice and gin would taste different than olive juice and vodka, um, especially if the vodka is your traditional would you like do, would tasteless, you do a... colorless, you know, smellless. Yeah. So um, liquor dot com tells me that you could make this with gin or vodka. Okay. So. Um, Interesting experiment for somebody who likes a dirty martini would be to do them both and tell us what the flavor difference is. Yeah, I would be curious to know about that as well. But no one in this room is going to actually do that nope. because we all kind of retch at the olive juice idea. I It's not even the olive juice for me. I don't like a spirit forward cocktail. Oh. End of sentence. Like... Uh, it just is too it's too much i'm a delicate flower you like a jung- jungle bird yeah um, and the cure royale so we finalized the menu for our home bar and that's i was consulting our martini recipe and my husband's is gin lily and that's it and then you garnish with a lemon peel 
but it comes with a caveat that if you feel this recipe is wrong you have enough experience to make your own and so you should do that because this isn't a real bar (laughs) <laughs> mm, I think that's fair. Yeah. I mean, my vodka martinis tend to just be like vodka, like shaken on ice in a glass. And then you twist a, like a lemon peel mm-hmm. above it just to get a little bit of that oil in and drop mm-hmm. it in. And, and we're good, which I guess it's just vodka in a glass. It's cold vodka in a glass. Like, let's just call yep. it what it is. I would have made a good. So vodka. you don't even do like the vermouth or Mm-mm. nothing? Okay. Yeah, I don't want that. That's true. My throat hurts. I don't like oh, it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not my favorite, <laughs> though. Like, I love a good lychee martini, which we'll get to at some yes. point. I don't think we've done that one yet. We um, haven't. But good. it has to be pear vodka. It does. And if you try to buy pear gin, it exists, but it is ridiculously expensive. I'm not paying $130 for you a bottle of gin. You should never pay $130 for a bottle of gin. That's yeah. that's foolishness. No. And there was a prickly pear gin, but that's just different. It's a, it's a whole different fruit. Okay, yeah. So that I had a, a pear cocktail on date night on tuesday uh, it was spiced pear and ancho res which is like a chili liqueur mm-hmm. so delightful i bet we could just throw some lychee in that and call it a day probably i don't know it sounds good what is isn't a lychee like the little that's the like fuzzy ones right the yeah furry, but, like furry looking ones yeah, yeah but that all that skin gets taken yeah off it's, it's the yeah. one that's like it's, it's like, like a, a grape golf ball yeah with a hollowed out hole in the top because they take out all the seeds and stuff. and oh, okay. Or are the seeds on the skin? I don't know. I just know they come in a can at the Asian market, and you've got to use them all, or they'll go bad. Oh. Mm-hmm. So. Um, okay. And that you use more of the juice than you use, or the syrup, I guess, than you do the... Oh, that's um, not what I was picturing at all. Oh, yeah. There's a pit in there that they, they pull out. Huh. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So it's like a little reddish on the outside. Yeah. But the skin does come off. But um, use way more of the syrup in the martini than you do the actual fruit. So you end up with this fruit and no syrup, which just doesn't work. So, Could could you juice them uh, to get more maybe? syrup? <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking that you just have to put like five pieces of the fruit on the stick in the, mm-hmm. in the drink. I do love a garnish. A garnish is good. Yeah. All right. Well, so Zach dislikes dirty martinis. Um, but we like Zach. We do like Zach. So <laughs> let's... Let's get, get to him it. On a microphone and figure out what else he dislikes about marketing. This is kind of, this could hurt. I'm nervous, but also excited. Same. Yeah. Dance break. And we're back. Zach, you're back. I'm here. <laughs> we gave you a microphone. Are we crazy? I don't think so. No, nah, we're good. Okay. I might be used to it by now. Right? I, so you're drunk with power, but not with a dirty martini. <laughs> yeah, I will admit, I pulled the wrong prep sheet for this one, so I did not look at There's your... no notes. Oh, there's it's no notes? It's literally just the recipe. I have all the notes. Oh, <laughs> That's why he's drunk with power. I guess. Well, all right then. So, okay, the fr- I'm kind of all over the place with these. They're all marketing That's really. on that brand sense. for you. That's, yeah, that's, good. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. But, um... I'll just start by saying one of the things I strongly dislike is um, content that's trying too hard to be authentic. So, oh, yeah. And like immediately when I think of that, I think of the crying CEO after. Oh, oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. We just talked about that the other day. We in, did. In yeah. Yep. yep. When he laid people off and then. And then it like his life was so hard. Can I back up though? Like before we get into the dislikes, why isn't it hates? Everyone else has been hates. Are you just too soft hearted to say you hate stuff? So. Um, or is that coming later? Our proof, our proof for Kim keeps saying that she doesn't like the word hate. <laughs> Oh, so this is Kim's fault. I will talk to her. Sweet Kim. So um, for my episode, I decided just to go with dislike. So. <laughs> so, and this hasn't gone to her, obviously, because we haven't um, nope. created the material. So when it goes, we're going to need a report back on whether she notices and proactively says. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be happy. She'll notice. That's hilarious. Kim, Kim's right. attention to detail is some next level stuff I mean, yeah and she's a she's a mom and she's got a huge marketing background like she's done so much yeah. um and i've known her for years um but yeah it's that's funny that this is her <laughs> influence not because zach's just a super I nice had, guy yeah, i had i had theories he's okay. just impressionable okay tell me more about inauthentic content or like it blindly 
be, I don't trying know. Trying too hard. Yeah, you're trying I think too hard. Were, were yeah. the words you used. Yeah. yeah, so I think some people just use any part of their life to like oh, for mm-hmm. content. And that just kind of bugs me. Um, yeah. Especially like the crying CEO. I think that's like the worst it could get. Yeah, but. I think there's also a bit of um, it. They're just, like they're trying too hard, but there's also this like lack of self awareness. Yeah. Like, do you really think that's like, did they really think that was going to get a positive reaction that people wouldn't mm-hmm. see right through it? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, I think it was on, um, I'm pretty sure it was on Love is Blind. One of the cam- one of the contestants show. was doing the like interview thing and a girl had like not wanted to marry him blindly after knowing him for like three days or whatever <laughs> without ever seeing him. And he was talking to the producer and he's like, he's like, do you mind if I like get some eye drops out? And so he got some eye drops out and he's like, <gasps> thanks. And then um, as he's talking to the producer, like he's trying to like make tears and he's not. And he's like it's okay if I do this, right? And he, the producer's like, go ahead, do whatever you want. Did they, and then they showed They showed all it, the... they aired it. And it's like, <laughs> do you think they're not going to air that? Of course they oh, aired it. No. But I mean, he put him in, and then he started to like sound like he was crying with the, the fake tears from I'm his so eye drops That's so down. annoying. Same thing. Like, it's like, and those tears might have been genuine. I don't know. But it's just this lack of self-awareness. Yeah. Yep. It's almost like they don't have a filter. They're so used to like being themselves on social media that sometimes they, they're they themselves too much. <laughs> I think it's um, the ultra rich too can be mm-hmm. that way. It reminds me of uh, Arrested Development. It's a banana, Michael. What can it cost? <laughs> Nine like dollars. Although you say that, but then it's a carton of eggs. What could it cost? $10? $9? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. it can happen. Yep. Yeah. I Bananas think that's a good one. Still, yeah. Um, yeah. Any other examples in that area? Uh, so I was trying to think of it, but honestly, I, I'm, I'm scrolling through LinkedIn, like looking for stuff a mm-hmm. lot, and I just see like a lot of like overly like why is everyone writing novels on linkedin like uh, everything is a is it. like a libretto yeah it's it's just like i don't know you need to just... post your butt sonnet on there from chat gpt <laughs> <laughs> something tells me that that would be flagged for like unprofessionalism or something so, and that's but... i think that's and that's where the crying ceo came up this week is somebody had done a chat gpt that was um Announce to employees that you're doing layoffs, but you're also promoting some executives and then throw in a Martin Luther King quote. It, and, and it and Chad, spit you, it you out. Did it. And I think when you read it for the first time, I think what somebody It sounds like a... Like Please a, tell me this isn't real. I was like, is this real? That might have been real. And like, some, a, like a bad PR agency you know, was like, yeah, this endorse, cosign, yeah, send it out. Some of that just detachment from reality mm-hmm. blows my mind. Or like the like the saying something without actually saying anything, like the non apology yep. apology, where like oh that was out mm. of my character, or but it's like no that was you, like you made that shitty choice, like apologize in a way that is like people, and then move on from it. I don't know. Maybe I'm also just exhausted from reading so many long LinkedIn posts. <laughs> <laughs> It could be. They wore you down. Stop telling me about your breakfast. (laughs) They wore you down to the point where you weren't going to be like submit. You were just going to be like completely angry and dejected (laughs) from it. Exactly. It's like anti Stockholm syndrome, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Let me out. I don't know. All right. All right. (laughs) Next. So uh, I wanted to say spam, but I thought I should probably narrow it down a little bit. Delicious, though. Spam, like fried spam is so good. No, like. Oh, not that spam. (laughs) Yes, but so I think what inspired this was a message I got yesterday on LinkedIn. (laughs) And it was like kind of weirdly. mail. Yeah, it was one of those, but it was kind of weirdly flirty. Like, (laughs) oh, yeah. I told told me about about this. And I was like, I was like, that's awkward. And you're like, yeah, weirdly flirty. Yeah, he was like, you look so positive, professional, and I don't know what the other word was, but then he sent Pretty. Like, a blushing emoji. Yeah, the and blushing I was like, emoji. Then... And then he tried to sell me something, so I did not like that. What yeah. could that mean? I, it means he misread Zach as being into dudes, I think. But uh, so like, I, that part is like, whatever, that's not... But who it, sells like, that way? Well, either way, guy, it definitely maybe made it did, me was it a mis- Yeah, no kidding. What was he trying to sell you? He was uh, an expansion, like, franchise person. I don't oh, remember what it was. Oh, those franchise people. I get those all the time. Yeah. They, no blushing I, emojis I for Rich. I never get blushing emojis, though. 
I feel like left out, but I basically get the like, I can see you've been very successful by pull one line from my bio. God, isn't that <laughs> the usually worst? not the current thing I'm doing? You know, are you ready for your next adventure owning a business? We've got franchise opportunities. And it's like, first of all, I own a business. I do own a business. Second of all, I do not want to own a second business. <laughs> it is controlled by somebody else somewhere. Uh-huh. So like, just like do your research, people. Yeah, and I think the second paragraph is like, this is probably a long shot, but... <laughs> That's correct. Oh, it Not... was, it's even longer of a shot now that you <laughs> opened with that. But... Yeah. I appreciate the ones where they're just copying and pasting and then like not including the correct greeting. Oh, hi, Craig. And I'm, like, that. I'm like, my name's not Craig. Did I? Nope, I've never been Craig. I not. usually write back, who's Craig? And no. <laughs> Please remove me from your list. Unsubscribe. And then yeah. along with like the LinkedIn stuff, I get a lot of like crypto bros oh, like messaging yeah. me. Hey, bro, do you want to make a lot of money? Uh, no, not with crypto currencies. SBF is a liar. Yeah, not, not a good time nobody, nobody feels bad for him. I mean, and I think that one's probably like, I don't get those at all. I think that's probably in part because you're young and you're in marketing yep. and they're thinking like, oh, he's got disposable income. Let's mm-hmm. steal all that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then same thing with NFTs, but they might be even worse. Because uh, I don't, yeah, none of it makes sense. Oh, uh, the NFTs. Mm-hmm. It's basically all scams, but. <laughs> yeah, don't buy this thing that you don't actually own. It's, yeah. Look. What's oh, next? God, I'm just thinking about the blushing emoji. That's so awkward. And LinkedIn, of all places, like, save that for, like, Instagram DMs or something. It was a little forward. <laughs> <laughs> a little. I agree. Could have been worse. It could It could have been a lot worse. You're right. Imagine just he like a listens lot of to this podcast and episode or something. I, don't I mean, know. if he does, we can narrow it down pretty quickly because aren't there like thirteen or fourteen people listening? <laughs> Fifty maybe. Fifteen. I don't know. No. <laughs> we'll find you. All right. Interesting. I wonder if that happens to a lot of people. If it did, like email us if you're listening. We'd love to know about your blushing emojis on LinkedIn. <laughs> All right. Or maybe not. Number three. So. This is from like a personal experience, but like just like any multi-level marketing schemes and stuff. Uh huh. Like love a good advertising pyramid. Advertising marketing jobs, because a lot of people actually run into this, but they'll be looking for marketing jobs, and then it ends up being like a complete scam. Mm, sell what are they to your selling? Family. That's marketing. They're calling that marketing. Oh like, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like all of those. Um, like the makeup ones and the leggings, leggings, like the clothing, all of that where you've got it. So first of all, if you have to pay them, it's probably not a job. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's the first true. step piece of one. It. Okay. Um, if, Is this where I realize I've been in a cult? I think it could be. <laughs> I don't think you have been, but I think that, yes, it could be. Oh, no. no. <laughs> if they, the thing I heard uh, earlier, too, uh, on some social media was if they offer you the job in the interview and it sounds too good to be true. It is. It's probably a multi-level marketing thing and they, or it's a door-to-door sales thing, and they <gasps> just, which could go Worse. hand in hand. And they just want you like out there um, selling. Yeah. And the door-to-door stuff is kind of scary because I've heard stories of people like, Okay, we're, you're going to have this interview, and then they take you out in, like, a van to, like, what? actually, like, not a van, but, like, so, they're like, okay, we're going to show you, like, what the job is. And then they just set you loose? like. And then, no, they take you to, like, a full days of, like, door-to-day sales. Oh, my gosh, that makes me so tired. Yeah, door-to-door. first of all, that should be illegal if it's not. Um, I think another good red flag on a job interview is if you show up and they ask you to get into a van, <laughs> that may be, it may be time to get back in your car and leave. Yeah. So we had, um, so somebody, obviously we have a doorbell camera because we have all the technology, but we had somebody who like rang the doorbell and I was uh, indisposed and was not able to get to the door, but it comes up on my phone and, mm-hmm. so I'm like, and it comes up on the Alexa and everything. And I'm looking and I'm like, who's this guy in like a green coat and whatever. So I was like, eh, whatever. So he ended up walking away, but I watched the replay and he rang the doorbell and then ran his hand across the top <gasps> of the door jam. And I'm like, he was looking what? for a key. What the hell? So that was super freaky. Um, couldn't see his face. He had a black like mask on the bottom. I mean, it was super cold out yesterday, so I don't blame him for that. That's oh, this so was yesterday. Creepy. This was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. 
And so and it, he had a clipboard and like an iPad. So it looked like he was probably selling something. But part of me's like, what kind of a klepto are you that you check for a key above the door jam? Like who touches the top of a door jam ever at anybody's house? That makes house? me so uneasy. Oh, it's yeah. Like, like, oof. I mean, great, gl- glad we have, you know, we have two dogs. We've got the security system. Your like dogs would not harm anybody that walked through your door. Um, they would just be like, hi, yeah, friend. that's probably true. That's probably true. <laughs> Can I have scratches? That'd be they'll be, they'll be loud. They treats? maybe be loud, but they wouldn't like. Well, they're only loud till you get in the house and then they just want to like hang out. <laughs> then they just want to love you. you. <laughs> Yeah, those um, MLM things. I think as you're getting, like, as you're young and, like, starting to get into a career and really trying to find that first marketing job especially, those can just nail you. Mm-hmm. I have a story, actually, from when I was in college. But um, What did you sell? It wasn't any of your organs. I did not it? join <laughs> an MLM. But I was in between jobs, I think, and I was, like, looking to get my, like, first, like, rental or whatever. Uh-huh. And I had, my friend told me, oh, I can get you a marketing job. Are you still friends with this person? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, because if you were, she was going to ask for names. You know that. <laughs> is it? What? No. Riley wouldn't. But know. it's funny because I asked him directly. This is not like a pyramid scheme or like a multi-level marketing thing, right? I was like, oh, no, bro. I would never, ever like how do much that to you. Did he, how much money did he ask for from you? To Nothing. Sign? So okay. he told me. I, he gave me a number. Didn't get that far. Oh. And then he had like the guy, the guy who like whoever I was in contact with, I can't remember. But he set up like an interview at like Panera Bread, okay. which probably should have been like the first red flag. I probably. don't know. I mean, Panera's for firing people, not for hiring people. Oh my people. god. <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, inside joke mm. done. I've actually heard of that before, but <laughs> um. Yeah, I went there and it was definitely a scam and it was like really weird because it started out normal and then he turned his phone around and started doing like a rehearsed presentation (laughs) and he was like very aggressive with how he was talking to me. And Zach bought a set of knives and went home. (laughs) But he was like, he was like, does this sound like something you'd be interested in? I was like, no, no. And he's like, do you know any friends that would be interested in this? No. Also no, it's like and I'm not. I friends had friends. With I would the... not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you have friends. Come on. But he would. He's saying if he, I know, if I he, if I, they were actually my friend, they I would not be after that. Yeah. 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 So I think we've got another tip for red flags in interviews. This is turning to, into red flags yeah. in interviews. Yeah. <laughs> if your interview is at whoa something loud happening outside, but um, if your interview is happening at Panera, um, and and you're not interviewing to work at Panera. Uh, maybe just like don't go. I Probably would just a red that. flag. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. If they ask you to do your interview at a Starbucks, but it's not Starbucks who's hiring you, I would be skeptical <laughs> of that. So unless it's like one of those remote things, although they'll just do a Zoom interview. A remote place is never going to meet you at a Starbucks. They're going to yeah. do a Zoom interview. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. So, wow. Well, was that number three, right? That was three. What's four? Was three. I'll, I'll finish it out with a fourth. Yes. I don't know if this is just because I work... And talk to Riley. Uh oh. It's it not Riley. No. It's when people say, like, oh, why are we ranking number one already? Like, what kind of like work are you doing? Kind of thing for like SEO and like. And then they don't trust us, you mean? Like. Well, just like expecting to rank. Why aren't we? Okay. Yeah. And I think that goes into oh. like. Like, really high expectations because of yeah. like black hat seo tactics that other agencies mm-hmm. push mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which gets people like when you're selling people oh we can get you to rank number one like nope really easily it's always it's never true that yeah yep right up there with no this isn't a multi-level marketing scheme or a pyramid scheme mm-hmm, you're lying uh-huh. well and it's just like maybe you could get those results very like short term yeah it that, that doesn't seem sustainable but, either it just messes things up in the long yeah. run. Yeah. yeah, that gave me a flashback to the, the, no, this isn't a swingers resort. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's definitely. If you've been listening to the podcast, that's come up. Like, you know. What um, episode was that? So that flashes back. <laughs> Hopefully that one's aired. If not, this is going to be a real, like, It's definitely aired. I just can't remember which one it is. 
Yeah, it was. I, you're right. It has aired. It's it's funny, but yeah, like most of the time, if somebody protests about something or insists super hard yeah. that that's not a thing, it, it is. It absolutely is. And I think it just puts a negative impact on like the actual good tactics that you can use because they take a lot longer, but like they're way more sustainable. Well, and if you're in like. If you've got really niche keywords or a niche category that's not super competitive, you can jump. You to the might first be able page to do really that, quickly. yeah. Um, but ninety nine percent of the time, that's not what's going to happen. It's going to be way, way, way longer than that. Yeah, and I think it just it does a really like bad thing for like people's expectations for mm-hmm. what they can expect. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then they go do the bad thing, and then they get blacklisted, and then we have to go clean it all up. And start from negative, not start from zero. And that's even worse. So, yeah, I think that unrealistic expectations that um, clients can have or businesses can have or that other marketing agencies set for clients. You know, it's not really their fault if somebody said they could do that. It's like I would ask, too, like, can you do this? And it's like, no, they're lying. Yeah. It's just, if it seems like a shortcut and it seems like it's. It is. Yeah. yeah. And I, I run into that a lot, like were asked to do like presentations or like marketing for small business and i feel like people just want like a silver bullet that solves all of their problems they do and they want it to cost five dollars yeah and it's like there's a reason our services are the dollars that they are because it's work and it takes expertise and like discounting Mm -hmm. that doesn't do anybody any favors yep expertise experience and time is what mm-hmm. you buy we've got all of it we do for the right price mm-hmm. <laughs> yep so those were four things that i strongly dislike i strongly oh, well. dislike I'm just not going to use that word hate on this one but all kim's fault thanks kim we love you <laughs> all right uh, so any parting words, anything that you just want to slam in there, anything that didn't make the list that just drives you crazy? What about not in marketing? Oh, One thing not in besides olives. Yeah, we already, we've beaten olives to death, the poor things. Yeah. Mean people, no. Mean people, right, that tracks for <laughs> I mean, you mean too. Mean people can yeah. be entertaining though. Yeah. Sometimes. I think, yeah, olives definitely are not, black olives are horrible, green olives are horrible. Man. The dirty Sometimes martini, the like reason it. I put that specifically on this episode is because I did try one. <laughs> oh, good for you. You and will try. You are an adventurous, like, consumer. I try and, like, try everything yeah. once. Yeah. But with the Dirty Martini, I drank it, and I could not finish it. Mm-hmm. It's, like, oh. one of the only cocktails I've ever drank that <laughs> I can't fin- I couldn't wow. finish. That's a little wild. So would you go so far as, as to say you, you hate, hate a dirty olives? Martini? I mean, you might be able to say that. <laughs> wow, he just really is really committed, committed to the bit. Very I committed. That. So uh, things Zach dislikes, we learned for four from four of them there in the marketing area, and we bashed on olives. One last time. One more time. All right. Good having you on this side of the microphone this time. Thanks, yeah, Zach. happy to be here. All right, and we're out. That's it for another episode of Cocktails, Tangents, and Answers. We hope it was as much fun to listen to as it was to make. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram at at Rich Mackey. I try not to make it too difficult. It's just my name. And you can find our agency at antidote underscore seven one. That's A-N-T-I-D-O-T-E underscore seven one on Twitter and Instagram as well. And you can find me at home sipping a craft cocktail prepared by my in-home bartender. It's my husband. We'll be back with another episode every other week and a whole new cocktail recipe, plenty more tangents, and of course, answers to those pressing marketing questions. And if you'd like to send us a question, you can go to ctapodcast.live to send us an email. Or you can call our hotline at 402-718-9971 and leave us a voicemail. Your questions might be used for future episodes of the podcast. For now, like and subscribe and tune in next time. 